I used to be so strategic and think, oh, I got to learn this and I got to do that. And now all I just know is that this practice, just doing this will take care of itself. You will improve. You will get better. And the art gets better. You can't help it. So we can fight it and worry about whether this is going to happen or not, or we can just absolutely fall in love with the process of what we get to do. Hey, welcome back, you guys. Today, I thought I'd do something different. I thought I would share how I think when I'm starting a picture and working on it and getting it going. And I love peeking into the way people work. I learn so much when you get to kind of like sit in on someone making something. So I thought I would do that. And today this is about a, I think this is five foot by seven foot painting. And I'm working on canvas stretched on hardwood panel. And the reason I like to do that is because I like to be able to push against the surface because when I'm working on canvas, it kind of, you know, it gives. And I like to be able to, once I get some paint built up, I after a while, then I like to scrape and sand and it, it, this canvas is too flexible. It, you know, it's like pushing on something. There's something to push against. So that's kind of why I do that. I work in oil paint and, and oil pastels. And I use these really large oil pastel sticks. There are these r and uh, handmade paint sticks. They're like one inch by five or six inches. And I love them because it allows me to draw and then I can use the oil paint for painting and I can kind of go back and forth. There's something about the speed at which I can work when I I'm use these oil pastels. And I use it, they can mix really well with the oil paint and so it's, that's mainly what I'm using. I use pencil, charcoal, sandpaper, and I'll talk about these things as I'm kind of grabbing them. to Life, a podcast for the creatively curious. My name is Nicholas Wilton, and each week I'll help you rediscover not just the art of your life, but the art in your life. Join me as we explore that perfect blue at twilight, the wild frontiers of art making, and the extraordinary joy of finding your way as you go. What I wanted to say starting out as I'm looking at this picture that there isn't anything on it yet. That I start with it's just white. It's just it's just canvas stretched over a panel. And I I have no idea what I'm going to make at all. And I used to try to figure it out ahead of time. And I would do these elaborate I would take a painting that I'd made and I'd bring it in on the computer and I would play around till I got something I liked and then I would create something that was pretty cool looking on a computer, literally. And then I would print it out <laughs> and put it on the wall. And I wasn't trying to copy it per se, but it completely influenced me. What I was doing was I was trying to reassure myself that there was a place I was heading and that more than likely this could turn out. It's literally, it was a confidence booster. But the problem with that that I found was that because I kind of knew where I was going, it wasn't as exciting. The, the outcome was kind of assured, but it was ne nothing ever happened that was different. And sometimes I would do this and then I would get the thing almost done, but I wouldn't really like it or it was just okay. And then I'd have to mess it up. And I noticed when I didn't have a plan at all that there was just more wonder in it and surprise. And so some point, I can't remember when, it was a number of years ago, I just stopped worrying about it. <laughs> and so I come into the studio now, I have all this work here around me that's far along, but there's something about starting with a black, a, a white painting with nothing on it. There is a level of intimidation, but all the other paintings that are standing around kind of make you feel like, okay, this obviously this is going to happen again and it's going to, something's going to happen. So, you know, I, I think in this idea that when we're free, 
to do what we want. And I am completely free standing here. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Then the likelihood that you're going to do something more original, more personal is higher. Again, I used to worry about what it was going to be. And I tried to do an end run around that by actually doing a comp of what I thought I was going to do. And then I stopped that. But I would still come in here and scratch my head and look at this thing and worry about it, trying to figure out, like, well, where am I going to start and where am I going to go? And that's been replaced now. I don't spend any time worrying about what I'm going to make at all because that's not an activity that I enjoy. It's not at all art making. It's just worrying. And definitely, you know, problems arise and, and I'll, I'll be thinking about it later and I'll try to come up with the solutions. And I mean, all that's part of it. But the part where you're worrying about it, I've just stopped doing. My art making is not even a thing until I walk in, I've got these gloves on and I'm at this point right here, right now. And I'm about to do something. It's the most present beginning place that I can start. And that's what I'm going to be doing. And so I'm going to share with you now kind of how I go about this and how I start with it. So I try to look here at this large surface and it's kind of big and it's kind of intimidating because it's this big thing and I haven't worked on it. And what I like to do is try to get some marks on it in many different places. Almost, and I've described this, you know, in teaching that when you bring a dog to a friend's house that's a fenced yard and it's your dog and the dog's never been there before, that dog runs into the backyard and it runs to all the corners of the yards, sometimes peeing, sometimes not, but it, it goes and it checks out every corner and it kind of cases the joint. And, and that's what I call it dog yarding. <laughs> and it's, it's a way for me to become familiar with the terrain. And so it doesn't matter what color I start with. It doesn't matter. I've got some pink paint here that is left over from something. And so I'm just going to start putting this paint on. I'm just using up paint, actually. I tend to use up the paint from the last painting that if I have it in cans, I take, keep the extra oil paint in yogurt containers and I'll put wax paper on the top of it to keep it from drying out. And I make a mark. Right now, I'm just putting on a big kind of swatch of uh, color. Then I will grab other paint that's been stored, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically put marks in other places. So I can do this with paint. I can do this with oil pastels. And I'm not at all thinking about anything. Now, the canvas is raw here. Well, it's got gesso on it, but the surface of it is really rough. You can hear how much abrasion there is on that. But as I go, I really like to get the paint, I like to get it on really thick. And that's really important to me to just get a lot of paint on to, so I can eventually have it be a surface of paint, not so much canvas. I don't really mind it like the, I'm losing all the canvas. That's fine. One of the things I do also is I use buckets for paint. So I've just poured out about a half pint of paint and then I'll, I can just kind of look, grab tubes of paint and squirt in color and I can't perfectly mix it, but I just can kind of, I've mixed paint my whole life. So I kind of know what color it's going to get. But I like this way of mixing. It's sort of interesting. And I wouldn't have thought of this as something I do that maybe a lot of people don't do until I actually am standing here making this. But I have, you know, about uh, four cups of white paint and I've just dropped in some paint and then I'm going to just mix it up with a drill. And what I like about buckets are that you can bring the bucket to the painting. And I used to spend so much time... <laughs> you know, I mean, you're just trying to get paint on the picture. And if you have to keep going back and forth, especially when you start painting larger, then you end up just going back and forth a lot. But now I can just bring the paint right to the canvas. And mixing it this way, mixing it in this bucket, 
What's great about this is that I can't sort of tell what color I'm going to get until I mix it with the drill. But I'm just intuitively throwing. So a lot of surprises happen, you know, because if I'm mixing on a palette, I correct it right away if I don't like the color. But in this instance, when it's just on a, when I'm just painting on a large, in a bucket, pouring thick paint in and then dropping in some pigment, the color doesn't appear until I mix it. And so that's also really important. And I love this way of painting because it's another element of surprise that happens. Now this painting is bigger than me, so I need a little stool so I can stand up and get to the other areas. So I'm going to mix up a couple of more colors. I tend to use, if I, like I'm just putting this blue color on, I'll put it in a few places. So when I'm up on this stool now and working on the top. I'm not getting back and looking at this. I'm just, I will soon, but I just, I'm just getting familiar with it. I'm just going to different areas of the painting. You know, for those of you guys listening, if, if you go to art to life underscore world on Instagram, and you have any questions about this, you know, underneath the podcast release, there's a little promo of it. Go ahead and ask a question, your comments, because I know that, you know, if you have any questions, I'm sure I'm sort of explaining it, but I, I'm, I'm wondering, I bet you have some questions. Okay, so now I have some things going. The color's hideous, but here's what I've learned, that the longer you can postpone thinking it's good or not, I mean, it's just, it doesn't serve you at all. And it's not even that fun. So it's a funny thing. You can just let go totally of whether it's good or not. I mean, you should try it. It's kind of freeing. And um, it also, I think it makes, it makes the painting better. There's more likelihood that it's going to be interesting because you're not editing so much. Okay, so I'm going to mix up. That was a blue color, so I'm going to mix up. I'm squirting in some cadmium yellow deep. And I use different kinds of oil paint, but generally I use these Gamblin oil paint, 150 milliliter tubes. And I haven't found that it makes a giant difference if it's you're paying, you know, for like a super premium. It seems good to me, pretty good. So that's mostly that's what I'm using for the oil paint. I'm going to mix this up now. Now, if I get a color that I'm not crazy about, you know, like now I'm going to mix in, I'm going to take some other colors and put it in to adjust it a little bit. I, I have to kind of like the color. If I don't like it at all, then it's a problem. So I, I'm not looking at it in comparison to the other colors so much. That's going to come much later. I'm still in the just get something on it. So here's the thing about color that I know that I rely on. I just thought of this because this just happened. I, you know, I grabbed two colors to make a color. I had white and I had yellow and orange, and I kind of wanted a rusty orangey color. And it's just kind of flat. And it seems to me that color doesn't really get that interesting until there's a lot of other colors in it. So it doesn't seem to matter also for me, especially in this stage, what colors are in the other colors. It's just that they're there. There's something there. It's a richer richer color that's made. And so, you know, I like this. I've got this kind of as a pea green color. And now I'm painting over the oil pastel. And this is interesting because I love the fact that you can put the oil paint right over the oil pastel. It just, it mixes in with it. And I'll, I'll use squeegees on top of this and I get, so you get this vibrant color underneath. And, and then when you squeegee it across, it starts to create a really rich surface. So I tend to use large tools. This is a kind of like a, a squeegee that would, not a squeegee, but a trowel, a trowel that they would use for smoothing finishes on walls. And it just allows you to really get a beautiful finish. I love using tools that are big, and not controllable, especially in the beginning, because too much control for me limits it. If I'm trying to control what it's going to look like, if I'm going to try and control, you know, make it into something that I'm preconceiving. 
What I'm trying to do is set up a situation where all I'm doing is demonstrating my choices based on what's come before. It's just a yes-no, pattern of yes-nos that end up, for me, and it's different for everyone, creating a kind of art that is related to all the other kind of art I make, just because there's a pattern, there's a, a sort of inherent knowledge or tendency to choose similar kinds of things. What I like is what I'm choosing. And I don't know why, but after, you know, like I've probably made a hundred decisions on this already, and it just starts to kind of look like my other work. Hopefully, it's getting better, you know, with each time, which it tends to do. One of the things that artists, that, that we're doing in making our art is we're learning a practice. We're learning a practice, and the practice is choosing. It's really simple. And everyone chooses differently. And, you know, if you, someone who's starting out in art, let's say, who doesn't do much art, and you say, well, what do you like, and or what would you like to make? They have no idea. But the more you do this, it starts to become more clear for you what you do like. And that's where experience kind of comes in. And we tend to buy, you know, work of artists that, you know, a lot of times they've been working a long time, but we're always buying someone's ability to choose, someone's discernment. How conscious is that? How sensitive is that? Now, I'm taking that blue color, and this is something I do a lot. I've, got, I've made a lot of blue already. That's what I started with, but I'm now adding other colors into it, and I'm going to kind of, I've lost the blue. I can always make it again, but I'm changing it into another color. So I'm not really it's a lot, doing this in buckets is kind of a lot more efficient because on a palette you lose, you lose a lot of the paint. So when I'm finished with this, I can also just put, you know, I can keep the paint in a bucket. It's already in a bucket. I have a little thin mix of like black and gray together. And I have that handy because a lot of times when you're starting out, the paint is just really saturated. So I tend to add that in just as a, it's really easy and it just kind of kills some of the saturation. So I'm, you know, maybe halfway through covering up the white. I'm just going to cover all of it up. And what happens for me, and it's just interesting, is that if I'm doing the same kind of mark, which I have been, I've been using the same brush and it's a bit getting a little boring. As soon as I start feeling that I'm a little bored, that's a concerning thing. And I, I want to mix it up. The way I've been making a mark, while all the while I've been talking to you, has been kind of the same thing. I'm not actually used to, like, talking so much. And I feel like I'm kind of just basically like Tom Sawyer fence. I'm just kind of covering it. And I don't want to be in that state too long. I want to push this energetically, my energy for this needs to be high. And what creates that for me is doing something that's different, using different tools, different colors, different, different approaches, instead of just what I know works. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, for the first time, I'm going to get back and look at this and just to see what it's doing. Because I haven't seen it before, and I've just been talking to you guys, and really, I mean, this is how I make it. I don't know it looks new and fresh. It doesn't even look like I made it. And I love that. You know, we have a lot of trouble. At least you know, I hear this a lot and I struggle with this too, the getting into your studio and making something and that it can be, you know, we procrastinate, you know, but this approach that I'm describing where it's just absolutely free, I don't have a problem. <laughs> I'll come in here for an hour. I no longer like have a lot of difficulty doing the art. I've gotten rid of the parts that make it hard, the judgment, the planning ahead. So, you know, maybe that's helpful for some of you guys listening that, you know, if you could reduce some of that, then there's less resistance to getting into the studio and providing you come in, then the, you're just going to keep making this work and it's going to get better. I used to be so strategic and think, oh, I got to learn this and I got to do that. And now all I just know is that this practice, just doing this, 
will take care of itself. You will improve. You will get better. And the art gets better. You can't help it. So we can fight it and worry about whether this is going to happen or not, or we can just absolutely fall in love with the process of what we get to do. I've got some paint on this thing and I stand back and look at it and and it's like I don't even know who painted this. And so there's this objectivity that I have that is really, really helpful because I don't have any recollection really. I, there was nothing planned. But now I look at it and I can, what I like, and I just notice what I like. And I like, I like the light shapes in this painting, which basically is the white of the canvas. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in some light color where that canvas is and then that's almost like the whole thing has got paint on it. So I'm going to mix up some really light paint here, a fair amount because I've got a lot of surface to cover. And this is the other thing with use, using buckets. You need a lot of paint for a large painting. I mean, you need a lot of paint for a, for a small painting. And running out or when the paint's thin, there's just a quality to that that we don't want. You just want to have enough. So that's another reason for using these buckets. I make a really beautiful pale white with, I'll use a little yellow ochre, you know, just a little smidgen of yellow ochre and a little bit of cadmium yellow light. It makes a color called Lilo's white. And it was a color that I came up with many years ago, painting a painting about my daughter, Lila. And it's, if you go to the Art to Life store, you can buy it, but you can also make it if you just know that it's titanium white, cadmium yellow light, and yellow ochre. But um, I use it a lot. So I'm just making that or something like it right now. I'm just going to mix it up. So I'm using a drill with a big power mixer handle on it. And, you know, the house painters use this stuff for mixing up paint. But it's so fast and it's so great. And then I'll take this drill and just hang it in my garbage can so I don't even have to worry about it dripping anywhere. Most of the brushes I use are crummy, cheapy, really cheapy ones. All they are for me are like shovels to get the paint onto the surface. So the kind of work that I'm making, I'm not doing realism. I'm not, you don't need, it doesn't have to be really that good. For me, it's just getting the paint on the fastest way possible. Sometimes I'll work on the floor and pour it. And I probably will on this painting at the next stage. What I'm doing today is I'm just getting this paint. My goal is, you know, while I'm talking to you guys, to get this thing going, get paint on all of this painting. It's all still wet, and uh, that's okay. I'm just really covering it. And there's an aspect of painting, just the act. I often wondered, like, why is this so satisfying? to do this. What, I mean, I'm, all I'm doing is, I mean, I'm not even trying. I'm just covering up areas and I, you know, like why, why is this so enjoyable? You know, I do these workshops and destination workshops. We get like 20, 30 people and we're painting all together and using acrylic paint. It's different, but we're together like a week and we paint in the mornings, we paint in the afternoons and most people paint at night as well. And, you know, everyone is into it. It's just really seductive. And I have often wondered, like, well, why? What is this? Why is it so engaging? And I, I think it's because it's satisfying to change things. You know, I'm right now I'm painting this thick, yummy paint. It's like a consistency of like pancake batter on top of this raw kind of thin canvas. And when the paint goes on it, and smears on it, it completely changes and the drips happen. So that's fun. There's like a little journey going on. There's a transformation that you're just witnessing and everything's changing. And as I'm putting this paint on, I'm noticing that it changes everything, right? When I add this color, it also changes everything else in the picture relative. It's all relationships. It's all differences. And so I think that's why it's so interesting. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna smooth out some of these transitions, taking my hand out of it. Right now, the whole painting feels really like it was all done with the same tool, because it was. And I, I like to use a trowel because it then feels more surprises happen. Sometimes I think painting for me is a, it's just about outsmarting myself, taking myself out of it. I used to try to be so controlling and now I just have to trick myself and make, use tools that I can't control, do things that I'm not sure about, anything so it doesn't feel habitual. And as soon as it starts feeling like that, I can kind of tell, you know, it's like if somebody's selling something and they're, they really care about it, they're not needing to sell it. But if someone's pretending to sell something, we all know it. And this is the same thing. You know, I'm literally not sure what's going to happen. The longer I can stay in that state, the other thing that happens when you paint thick is that you become aware of a force which is gravity, and things start to move, and things start to drip, which I love. And that's just an interesting quality, you know, aspect of, of what kind of happens in this time, in this process. So getting back to look at this now, pretty much covered all the areas. To me, it's, it's sort of interesting, but I definitely can see that there's a lot of similar things happening here, which is great because I can, I can see it. I'm going to come in now based on what I know to be true, that if we have the same areas, the same quality, and it's probably because I'm talking too, that if I do the same kind of thing, so I'm going to scrape some of this paint off and change the proportions of things a little bit. I've got these dark blue shapes. I don't want them to be all the same. So now I've had a look. I'm going to come in and I've scraped off the paint where I'm now painting this blue back on so it'll be more pure. And I'm just adding this and making it a bigger proportion. Now this is a about a five foot by seven foot painting vertical. And I want to come in now with some larger tools. When I can't control it, that's when everything interesting happens. And better, and it's better, better looking. It's just crazy. So there's a bit of removing that's starting to happen now, which is the first thing, taking some of this paint off. And this is the very beginning of the editing. It's still crude, but I want to start taking some things away. Now, because the paint is wet, I wipe it off to put another color there. But once it's dry, that's completely different. Then I come back in. The next pass on this will be in another day, once this is all dry, a day or two, and then I no longer can remove it. But right now, I can manipulate this. So everything's in flux. Everything is wet and it's movable. So that's it. I've now taken this to, I've gotten this to this place that is this thing's completely covered. I don't know that was like half an hour. No longer is this a white thing, but it's a thing that it's got a lot of surprises in it. It's actually really interesting and there's, it's not developed at all, but it's beginning. And this thing is starting to tell me what it wants to become. And I think that's the, the beautiful way of working sometimes to just find your way as you go. You know, I've talked a lot about that. In fact, the whole theme of the Arts of Life podcast is how we do this and how artists and how we develop and, and change and grow along the creative path. So it's no different within the narrow confines of just one singular piece of art. So you guys, listen, thank you so much for being here. Um, I've never done this before. I'm wondering if you can picture if this was helpful at all. I'd love to hear from you. If you go over to art to life underscore world and leave a comment or your thoughts. I've never actually talked about this when you can't completely see the painting, but let me know if that was helpful. It was really, really fun to uh, have you be in the studio with me today. And, and listen, if you have, do me a favor, you know, if you, if you're enjoying the art to life podcast, if you could leave a review or share it with a friend, I'd really super appreciate it. That makes a big difference in how it's 
put out and how uh, Apple iPod podcasts spread and grow and gets out there. Thanks a lot. I will talk to you next week. Okay, thanks. Hey, thanks for listening to the Art to Life show. If you enjoyed the podcast, please help me get the word out by sharing it with your friends on Instagram at art to life underscore world. The recording of this and all episodes, along with a place to leave comments, see additional photos, and discover a whole new approach to making art can be found by going to arttolifepodcast.com. And secondly, if you could leave a rating and review and whatever app you're listening on today, I would super, super appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And last but not least, before you go, if you'd like to be on my artist list, every Sunday morning, I send out a video blog all about art making. Go to arttolifepodcast.com to sign up. And all these links are in the show notes, of course. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye.